Hi. I'm Craig. Welcome. <laughs> That's my brother, Brad. Welcome to Weekdays with Craig and Brad. Episode 43, brother. Oh my gosh, man. They just keep coming, don't they? Nonstop, over and over again. I'll tell you man. what, man. I had, a, I had a great legend come in today. Like straight up, it was outstanding. Aaron Lang, if you're watching this, I just want to say thank you for coming over to twitch.tv slash Craig Skits. Aaron Lang helped us push to a knockout, which allows us to record this show live tonight. We had a great, right. great day today. Aaron Lang came in. Let, let, I want to read you this message that Aaron said. Hold on. Let, let, let me make sure, I, make sure I get here. Oh, I see. I can't find it. But it's uh, he essentially said that this show is exactly what is needed in today's world. The idea of honest conversation and being able to talk about things. And I said, wow, that's awesome. Wow. That makes me happy. Cool. So that's great. Go. Yeah. Love it. Love it. I was, I was, I was uh, skimming back through some of our previous episodes and I was like, yeah, you know, like I just, I like that this is just like, it is what it is. There's not really too many frills and we're just hanging out, chatting. And we're just doing our thing, you know, every day, every day, just doing the thing, right? Weekdays. Uh, well, yeah, every weekday. That's right. Andy Jones, by the way, first one in the chat today. Big ups to Andy Jones. Let's go. There he is. Yo. Love that. Love Indy. Love Indy. Man, one of one of the best mods on the planet. I'll tell you that much right now. Hey, uh, yeah. you know something we haven't done in a long time? What's that? Giving you giving everybody an update on our subscriber count. Oh yeah, yeah. How's that should, going? Should I should I uh, <laughs> should I show everybody that? Sure. I, I hope it's positive. Oh man, it's great. <laughs> it is awesome. Check this out. I I I got a. I'm gonna screen share my screen with you and everything. I mean, yeah. I'm gonna show you, show you exactly how much money this show makes. Oh, so. boy! Don't go bragging on on the show. Oh, hold on, hold on. Okay, maybe <laughs> maybe I won't. Maybe uh, I won't. Hundred. Listen, I'll tell you this right now. Total revenue for the last month for this show. How much? How? What do you think? Six dollars. One hundred eighty. $4. Are you joking me? Wow. But that that's because we had a big super chat day of $57. For the most part, we make about two bucks a show. <laughs> <laughs> See, that's what I was thinking about month, month, month of work. It's probably about $6 in YouTube. Yeah, for sure. For YouTube sure. <laughs> uh, but I'll tell you, so, so here's the thing. Let's, let's give everybody a rundown of, uh, of exactly where we're at with our subscriber account. Look, I, no shame. Yeah. We, we, full, we're going for full transparency here, right? Yeah. Uh, here we go. Channel analytics. Check it out. Uh, right here. Look at this. Wow. Whenever we post a video, we drop subscribers. <laughs> wow. 59 in a day. Wow. Yeah, it was great. This was this was a big episode. This is when we were talking about the Civil War. People didn't like that, Brad. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. We wouldn't want to we wouldn't want to rock the boat too much. People didn't want know? people didn't like the hypocrisy of a Apple and Amazon, and they certainly didn't like that one. The, what oh. the heck is happening right now? So uh yeah. look. You, you stick with the frill and the in the in the in the in the frizzy stuff and you know what it's all good yeah but, hey for the most part like david hasselhoff people people can tolerate only 23 <laughs> lost subscribers look at this we gained a, there was this, this single day where we gained subscribers because people didn't know any better <laughs> yeah yeah i wonder what episode that was no uh master obi-wan oh. has, has a great question it says does this count towards patreon supporters uh no actually we actually have a, an almost a near record we're, we're trying to get to 110 patreon supporters right now yeah. uh we are at 108 so look at this we only lost two yesterday but oh, nobody nice. watched yesterday nobody watched the david hasselhoff <laughs> episodes they didn't have a chance to get out so that's uh, fantastic well you so, know what like mm -hmm. i i i think that uh listen i my 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 own uh predictions about the show i think i said about episode 36 that things would start taking off for us but i think uh episode 43 is where it all happens oh yeah yeah, this is going to be a good one. You want to tune in. You want to click that subscribe button and hit the thumbs up. Uh, listen, I got to be honest. I don't care. I'm having a great time doing this. I, do, I just want to make sure that people come back every single day hit the get the notification yeah. bell on. You that. know, that's the funny thing is, is I have so many channels that I watch that I'm not subscribed to. That's they true. just show up anyways, and that's I'll true. watch them. And it doesn't mean I don't like them, you know? Yeah. The subscriber yeah. thing is is kind of just like, yeah, whatever. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm not super concerned about it, but but I, I'll tell you this. Let me let me let me do a quick quick glance here for real fast. I just want to make sure everyone's on on the same page as far as uh you know where we're at from a. Let's see where where are we right now? Try, trying to trying to show everybody 
uh, our discovery. Because this, is, I, I feel like it's cool to see see these things, you know, where people are finding out about us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Let's see. Yeah. Hold on. Let's see. Let's see. I got it. Let's see. Letters Audio. to Grandma, dear see, Grandma. Yeah, a real, a real letter. I found this YouTube channel. You need to get on your computer and connect. So here, here's the issue. Here's the issue right here. Let me let me show you the issue here, Brad. Uh huh. This is this is a big deal, big deal. Part of our analytics, Brad. Mm -hmm. Look at this. Watch time from subscribers. Subscribers subscribed eighty percent of our watch time. Oh, right yeah. Look at this. We have a 98 percent of our audience is male, Brad. Ninety eight percent. All right. Listen, yeah. if you if you're if you are a female, look at this. <laughs> look at this yeah. right there. You Wait. are special. If you are, yeah. You know what? Hey, uh, big props for diversity there. So here we go. Look, we, we have a uh, fifty six percent of our audience is between the age of twenty five and thirty four year old males. Look at that. that Essentially, nice. the. the Everybody who's watching us, except for the one girl, <laughs> is is yeah. us. It's you and me, Craig. It's well, we're we are our own demographic. I think. I love it. I love it. I got to be honest. <laughs> I, I got to be honest. This, you know, look, I, I I love what we got going on over here. So nice. Yeah. Look, Iceman says, "Oh, I'm outside of that. 35. There it is. <laughs> oh boy. Oh boy. Well, look. Hey, if you know any other any other uh, any other people that fit that demographic." Shoot them a link and say, "Hey, check out this show. I think you'll really like it. It's it's That's made right. for people like you and me." So, hey, if you're if you're part of the fifty six percent, just saying, let's go, let's go. Yeah. All right. All what right. do we got today, Craig? Okay. So today we we, uh, we got we got some good stuff. But before before we get to any of the good stuff, right? Because listen, we got some good stuff. It's time for the YouTube comment of the day. Today, coming from Franklin Brooks, talking about yesterday's episode. Goodness, this one was hard to watch. I must have really embarrassed my younger bro who uses these phrases every uh, daily by playing this episode through my uh, Trinitron, Tr Trinitron speakers. Thank you, oh, Franklin nice. Brooks. You yeah. are the YouTube comment of the day. Way to go. Nice. Great. Hey, yes, straight up. Yesterday's episode, the lit the litmus test. Good idea in theory. Yeah, right. I'm sure those who watched it loved it, loved oh. it. But yeah, those words they did break. They did make my uh, brain hurt a little. Did bit. Did you get the link I sent you earlier today with William Zabka of Cobra mm -hmm. Kai? They were doing a table read, mm -hmm. and and he he got the litmus test after oh, a day yeah. after 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 we did our our litmus test. Uh, he was told. Uh, they, they were doing a table read and the girl that plays uh daniel larusso's daughter she was like uh she was like oh you guys ship so so well and he was like what and and then um they had to explain it to william zabka and they were like ship like relationship she thinks that you two go well together and he was like oh i guess that's a generational thing i didn't know but i was like i i was i was just there buddy i know exactly how you feel yeah i'm surprised that one wasn't in the list so for those that don't know ship is when you're in a relationship and somebody approves of it. So, okay, sounds good. Well, I'm glad. I'm glad everybody <laughs> needs everybody's approval, <laughs> which is important. Yeah. So, uh, here you go. Uh, Cree coming in says, "Wait, these are posted on YouTube? Yeah, <laughs> YouTube.com/slash Craig Skits. You can subscribe over there. Uh, that'd be outstanding. So, yeah. all right. Um, so we we got a number of number of big topics today. Number mm -hmm. of big topics today. I'm, I'm very excited about this one. Um, mm -hmm. Uh, including uh, butt swabs. So, do you want to get into that first, or, or uh, how about how about you? We get into your stories first, and then we'll we'll kind of go from there. Or, or do you want me to start with my story? Uh, I don't even know what my story was. That was my story. Well, <laughs> was well, it? I'll, I'll go to my story first. Okay, okay? sounds okay. good. And uh, are you familiar with Ninja Ninja YouTube guy? Twitch guy. He is Twitch the guy? biggest, biggest streamer in the world. He uh he makes bukus of monies. He, oh he, he is a guy who uh well, so do seven, we. I don't know if they you, saw, our analytics. saw the analytics, but uh <laughs> what's up? So here's the thing. Um he I have I have a lot of respect for Ninja as far as his work ethic goes. The dude grinded for seven years and then he caught the Fortnite gravy train. 
He, was, he used to be a pro uh, pro competitor uh, in like different games. Then then Fortnite hit. He's got cool blue hair. He's got a cool name. He's got a cool logo, and he's really good at Fortnite. So when Fortnite hit, he hit to the moon. Right, became the yeah. biggest streamer in the world. Okay. Okay. So. Uh, but he has a very young audience, very young audience, because uh, mm -hmm. young young people like Fortnite, right? Mm -hmm. But Ninja is in trouble. Uh oh, Brad, Ninja what what is in trouble because <sighs> Ninja has said it is not his job to educate kids who make racist or sexist comments. It's so here's not? the thing: no, it's not. No, it's not. He says. It's the parents' jobs. What? That's crazy. And people are upset, Brad. Oh. They are mad that 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 here's the th there they are mad that Ninja will not educate these children when they get when they step out of line and say bad things in a chat room. Oh man, yes. that's mm -hmm. crazy. I thought it was. Uh, I thought we were supposed to look up to. Uh... Are internet influencers? No, I, no, absolutely not. Uh, no, I mean, look, look at him. Look at how awesome he looks with the mountain in the background. Yeah. Uh, yes. <laughs> it, it's it's amazing. It's amazing. Um, so, in a broad ranging interview with the New York Times, his name is Tyler Blevins, was asked about his beha the behavior of young people in his Twitch chat, and specifically if uh, if he felt he could mitigate bad behavior. The streamer argued that it was down to parents, not him, to educate the children who post racist and sexist comments during his, during his streams. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Your information and data are precious and, and should remain private, but it sucks that there are kids who, who say racist things and incredibly aggressive and threatening to women online and have zero re repercussions. It would be awesome if when someone said uh, something threatening, you could be like, let me, let me look up this dude dude's gamer tag on this website if the law if the law could do this not a normal person then boom it's jimmy he said it let's call his parents right mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, he, he had it but it all comes down to parenting you want to know you want to know who who your kid is listen to listen to your kid while he's playing video games uh when he thinks you're not listen mm -hmm. uh here's another thing <laughs> how does a white kid know he has white privilege if his parents never teach him about or don't don't talk about racism so like yeah. you know he, he's kind of all over the place in here so yeah. but but tyler thinks uh shockingly that it is the parents jobs yeah but before what? we go on to that i would like to Crazy let everybody concept. know that since here's the thing since it is our job apparently according to the internet and we yeah. are influencers here today possibly the biggest influencers on the internet we are craig and brad after all yeah arguably yes yeah let me just say this if anybody wants to go out and donate fifteen thousand dollars to me right now, that would be in your best interest. I would greatly appreciate that. Wow. Okay. Just, just saying, you know, if anybody wants to do that, that is the right thing to do. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because we listen to you. Yeah. What should I ask for? No, 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 no. You influence. <laughs> you don't ask for things. You influence it. Oh, what should I influence people to do? <laughs> yeah that sounds so like so creepy like that that's a job these days right the the whole influencer thing instead of instead of like really looking you know we've got a handful of of musicians and actors that are still in the game that are are the original influencers right like back in the day it was elvis and then the beatles right and and but now it's just like it's some some girl that created an instagram following and she models clothes and that's it and she's an influencer she you know and and it's just a crazy thing that you really you know like that's great you know he he ninja created something for himself and you know what more does he need to do you know why right. is he responsible for that right right it's crazy you know um he's not you know, telling he's not telling people you know like it'd be one thing if he was on there and he was like playing games and he was like hey kids you need to go uh do a lot of drugs and and you know like he's saying bad things and telling you to do things but when it's reversed and the audience is saying things you know it's like imagine a uh a, a, a guy on stage he's the lead singer of a band and everybody starts yelling things at him in the crowd 
from the crowd what's he supposed to do talk to each every one of them and be like well okay, oh this guy over here said you know and like what are you supposed to do i don't know nothing parents yeah. are supposed to do these things right like I, I do feel like that we live in this generation where and we we both seen it right we have we have six and eight year old kids both of us just conveniently mm -hmm. um but uh you know well i my, my kids don't have a whole lot of screen time on a day-to-day -day basis, you know, probably 30 minutes, right? Mm -hmm. Specifically like of an iPad or a switch or something like that. We'll watch TV or whatever, but um, you, you do see parents when they go out, just hand out an iPad or hand out a phone where oh yeah, people are, are at, uh, you know, either the store and they have an infant who is just staring at an iPad uh, yeah. or everyone's, you know, you're at a dinner and, and everybody's on their phone, not talking. You know, mm -hmm. uh, you know, this has been talked about a million times, but like this, those are really, I'm not like, I'm not telling you I'm the best parent ever, but I am telling you those are opportunities for you to actually have relationships with your kids mm -hmm. and talk about these things, you know? Yeah. So, yeah. uh, I do that a lot with the car rides because we're very, uh, you know, we don't, we've never once, you know, put a movie on in, in the car for a, a long car ride or anything. I'm just like straight up like old school. I'm like, look out the window. Right. Use right. your imagination and think. Let's talk about something. What do you see? What's you know? the longest car ride you've done? Seven hours. Seven? With with the kids. Yeah. Se seven's right about the limit, I think. Yeah. You know, yeah. Like it, it was okay, you know, like they did good and no screens, you know. And that that was it. Yeah. Uh JT in in uh, MKE says bond over music. Yes, that's what we do. We play music, you know, they, my kids are, Hey, turn it up. You know, they, they, in the back seat, like my son says, turn it up. You know, that's jam. They, we right. listen to music, you know, we sing along, we play games, we'd be silly, but you know, and that's the thing though. Those are opportunities to connect and teach your kids how to behave, you know? Right. So when they're you know, in a situation like that, they don't hmm. cause them trouble. Go ahead. Check it. Indy, Indy coming in says, my family dinners every every Sunday at my parents' house. Everyone puts their phones away and has conversation. So, you know, I was thinking about something like that because I I um I mentioned doing that with my family. That's something that we do, you know, pretty much most, most nights. We sit around the table and we talk about the things that were that we liked about the day, the word, the best things, the worst things, and the funniest things. That, that's, mm -hmm. that's things that are common conversation at our house. And someone goes, Oh, that's really wholesome. Like it was a bad thing. Like wholesome is a bad thing. When did wholesome become a negative? Mm. You know? Yeah, that is yeah. wholesome. It's awesome. Yeah. yeah it's like because Craig, no that, that reminds me of the 1950s when all the problems of today began. When the mm. family sat around the dinner table and talked. That's right. <laughs> we can't have that anymore. But the story with uh, with Ninja in particular reminded me of uh, a, you know something that happened in the 90s. With, uh, do you remember Charles Barkley? The basketball player. He's now yes, a commentator. I remember Charles Barkley. Just saying. Okay, so Charles Barkley had a famous commercial where he said, I am not a role model. I am not your role model. And he's essentially saying exactly what Ninja is saying. Like, look, mm -hmm. outside Ninja can be a role model, but he's saying, like, it's not my job to parent your kids. It's not my job to teach your kids what's right from wrong. You know, yeah. it's your job. You know, that's the parent, it's parental figures. That's how that's what a parent does. So yeah, I mean, that's what you got to do. He's got a great point. Like, that's, that's like, if you want to take any advice from him, listen to what he said about, to you know, as a parent, listen to what your kids are saying when they think you're not listening, you know? And here you go. That Don Parker wants to know, whatever happened to predictability? Whatever happened to predictability? The milkman, the, milk the, the paper, paper boy, evening TV. That's, that's right. <laughs> everywhere you oh sorry uh all right yeah so it, it, this is fascinating that we're still having this conversation and we will have this conversation forever as long yeah. as there are lazy ass parents and the the idea yeah. that like this guy is getting criticism over this is mm -hmm. fascinating yeah right like that says so much like god you're idiots god mm -hmm. you're all idiots you're all idiots sorry you're dumb you're dumb if you think that way oh my god Sorry. Wow. Um, you know, I was having a conversation with uh, Kelly, my wife, earlier today. Yes, yes, and yes. we were talking about um, JoJo. 
Oh, Jojo Sawa. Sawa, yeah. Yeah, so from what I understand, she's coming out as uh, a transgender, I think, or something like that. Um, you might want to look into that. Um, this is what I hear on the streets through the wife. But I was I was thinking about so how, how uh, you know, it, it's upsetting a lot of people, a lot of parents, because she's created this very wholesome thing. And so uh, the whole transgender ident identification pronoun situation, it, it offends a lot of people. A lot of people, you know, would, it doesn't matter what side you're on on it. But what happens, what I noticed is that a lot of these young girl superstars start out very wholesome. And then at some point they decide like, I'm not that person anymore. And they just make a direct pivot, right? Like Britney Spears or Miley Cyrus, like they start out pretty wholesome and then they just pivot, right? And that's when I think the parents need to have those conversations about with their kids, with like about what's happening to someone that they do look up to, right? That's where the mm -hmm. parents' responsibility needs to come in and they need to go like, look, I, I see that you're you're watching what this person that you admire is doing. Let's talk about it and let's discuss, you know, um, what's going on. So, oh, so, so Jojo came out as gay. Okay. Yes. How, how old is Jojo? 17. Oh, really? Yeah, 17. Okay. Well, whatever. I mean, I just, I just find that, that fascinating that it's, that it's always like, there's some like with a young, particularly girl superstars, they always like make this little pivot at some point once they become a teenager. And then like, that's when I think the, the conversation needs to happen, whether, you know, as a parent, you think that they should continue to be influenced by this person because mm -hmm. yeah, Ninja is an influencer and he is influencing your kids, but you need to, you know, figure out what they're influence. You need to pay attention to what they're, they're influencing your kids on, you know, with. do you, do you feel, and I, I would love to, you know, like, uh, we have several, uh, several gay community members, right. Who watch us. And this is, this is a legitimate question for you, right? Like there, there are, uh, and for everybody, you know, there uh -huh. are a lot of people who, who, uh, they like identifiers are a big thing. Now I've talked about that, right. The idea of like, well, I, uh, I'm a two-time cancer survivor. I'm gay. I'm a, like, what, if, you know, like, all right. Cool. So like, sh is it okay as a white guy for me to be like white guy straight? Like, is that, is that, is that okay? I mean, it's a legitimate question. I'm legitimately, I don't asking know. I'm not a fan of labels on all honesty. Me, me like, neither. We, we talk about that quite a bit on, on the show. I think like, like you and I don't really you know, we look at people as people. And if you're right, if you're, if you're a quality person, that's what I'm looking for. You know, like outside of that, like, I'm not, I, I don't know. I don't care. Like go right. be yourself, <laughs> like just be 100%. a quality person. <laughs> I think that's, that's like the, like, I have such a hard time with uh, the idea of, of having to qualify somebody, you know, the idea of like, look, I qualify you as a good person with a good heart. You know, like that's, you know, or, or just a jerk, you know, it's very simple. Uh, there's like good people and bad people. There's not, you know, multiple columns here. It's just like, yeah. you know, there's somebody I want to be with and someone I don't want to be with. It's very, very yeah. simple, you know? Yeah. Uh, and, and I, I don't need qualifiers to do that. So, yeah. you know, even me saying that though, but like, you know, uh, white and straight, like, mm -hmm. I, I don't like that. I hate that. I just said that. It, yeah. it feels weird and uncomfortable, and I do. I just I don't like having. Maybe you need quality. to go spend some time looking in the mirror, then, Craig. You know what I need to do? I need to go talk to Ninja and see how I need to react. That's yeah, what I need you to need do. to figure it out because yeah. it's our responsibility. It's good. Oh boy, yeah. Well, so, so what's your story? What's my story? Do you have the story pulled up? Do I need to share the screen? Oh, do you want me to do that? I'll I'll, I'll pull it up. Sure. Which All one? Right. Uh, the anal swabs. <laughs> yeah. All right, I got that. Here we go. Look, uh, COVID anal swabs from Beijing residents. Uh, Wait, hold on. What's Arnold, Beijing... what's Arnold Schwarzenegger doing to get in the COVID? Vaccine? It has nothing to do with this story. This is that's <laughs> so funny. Is it's just a I watched this earlier. I pulled up this article. So I'm reading the article. The title is COVID anal swabs for Beijing residents uh, are more accurate, says Chinese expert. And I'm like, mm -hmm. oh, that's interesting. So I click on this video and it's Arnold Schwarzenegger and he's like, give me the shot. And then they like, and he's like, uh, he's like 
all right, I just got the shot. Everybody go get it. Come with me if you want to live. He actually pulls one of his lines out of his movies. Yeah. Man, nice. Way to go. Come with me. He gives a little wink. I feel great now. Bye. Like, okay, great. Uh, look at this. this is great. Let's check this out. <laughs> this is great. CDI. Now that's a pivot. <laughs> we went from that from that to, to anal swaths about COVID. Oh, that's good. Well, listen, hey, you know what would be great with this article is if it was Arnold Schwarzenegger getting an anal swab. <laughs> <laughs> I love everything about that. Yeah. I love that. So. Anyway, so yeah, uh, more than a million uh, Beijing residents undergoing coronavirus testing amid a uh, fresh outbreak have been administered anal swabs, which are considered more accurate and raise the chance of detecting COVID-19, said a Chinese disease specialist. So this is what's coming to America, most likely. If you, uh, if you thought the nose one was uncomfortable, oh boy. Here we Here go. We I love this. <laughs> uh, I like that bum tingle is in here. <laughs> Listen, if we talk about butt swabs, I think you need to bring me in as a house expert. <laughs> Please come on in. And, uh, <laughs> That's what I'd say. A little man wants to know. So, so, so how far up we talking here? I'm just saying. <laughs> right. Yeah. So look, uh, one in the nose, one in the butt. Uh, they're talking about two and three masks now the last couple of days. So, uh, you know, that did going, you, that going you with see? your, with your, with your, oh, when, when, let me list out what's happening to us. Okay. Here's what's going on. Shot twice, two or three masks, mm -hmm. test in the nose, test in the butt. Okay. Don't, little i feel a little violated just listing that out <laughs> okay you. go ahead go ahead uh health authorities in china in the chinese capital say they were aiming to screen more than 2 million people in 48 hours among them around 1.6 were uh inhabitants in daxing were to give antibody testings as well as throat nasal and rectal nu nucleic acid swabs anal swabs have been used since last year including uh, including in the major port city of Shanghai, but the method is is so far reserved for individuals in potential COVID hotspots, according to the infectious disease expert quoted by China's state broadcaster CCTV on Saturday. Hey, Craig, ask yes, me yeah. ask me where I would prefer to get uh, a, a COVID test. Brad, where would you prefer to get a COVID test? Up my butt and around the corner. Oh, I, I pulled that man. from CDI Arcade. He said, do they go up, up the butt and around the corner? Pulling our, our uh, hashtag bring it back challenge out. Love it. For, Love for it. the win right there. Way to go. Love it. That, that's, Don Parker just goes, oh, he goes, uh, that's, that's a lot of butts. <laughs> <laughs> Two million butts. Oh, man. Just imagine a big old row of butts and the guys like riding down on a scooter and just going... <laughs> There you go. Daddy Quick says my my family was exposed and we didn't have any tests, just quarantine for per for per work requirements. Mm -hmm. hey, you know, simple show of hands in the chat. Uh, who has had COVID in the chat? Because I know there's several. You know, Kristen, uh, it, we're pretty sure that everybody has had COVID in our neighborhood. Like literally every single house has had COVID at some point. We're the only ones that have not had a positive test. So Kristen actually went to go draw blood and she actually uh, got the antibody test, which we should be hearing back in the next couple of days. And if she did, she has the antibodies and it means she had it at some point, which we're pretty sure she did. Or I'm pretty sure I did. But who knows? Well, the rules are changing now. They're changing from you need two tests to, to be positive. They changed wait. that recently. I think it's going into effect. But I, I was thinking about this because I think wait, it's wait, going wait, into wait, effect. Wait, 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 what? You need two, two positive tests to... to register as positive who's paying for these the tests are free aren't they i don't know but but so they've changed the the rules i think it goes into effect in february but i was thinking uh wait a minute like if they if the scientists have already decided this right like then you need then why does it need to wait a month to go into effect you know what i mean wait so i didn't just go into immediate effect right so when is this supposed to go into effect? I think February sometime. Okay. I just so, I just spout things that I hear, but I'm pretty sure that that's going to be the thing. I think they've changed that like two days into uh, 
Biden's presidency here. He, it, it was like all of a sudden, like, hey, you got to get two tests now. So think about that for these Beijing folk. Yeah. Two butt tests. Two butt tests. That's right. Man, that's crazy. Uh, that's uh, There you go. Travis says, if, you, if you're billed for the COVID test, you can send the bill to the state Medicare program and they will cover it. There you go. That's nice. Okay, good. Just just triple checking. So how far along do these tests need to be? Uh, how, how far apart do the test needs to be? There's so many questions I, I have. And like, do, do, uh, can they be the rapid test? Do they need to be the, uh, you know, the regular test that takes like, take like two to three days, you know? I don't know. See, I don't, look. I'm the average Joe. I hear a thing and then I repeat it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so look, I hear these things, but my question was like, okay, if that's the decision now, why are we waiting a month, you know, to, to, uh, it's kind of like they were going to pull kids out of school at one point and they're like, yeah, we're going to take the kids out of school out of the next semester. And it was like, well, the, if, you know, why are you waiting a month? If it's so serious, just take them out right now. You know right. what I mean? Right. It's all it's all with the uh, inconsistencies that we talk about. It's yeah, great. yeah, for sure, for sure. I, you know, it's funny. Um, like, so I've seen some comments saying that we like we're COVID deniers. Like we like we just don't believe COVID exists. Who said that? And that's like the dumbest shit. Uh, sorry, that's the dumbest shit I've ever heard. Like, we know COVID exists. We mm -hmm. absolutely we, we we have. I've known it's tons been around. Of you know, it was around. Uh, before well there's uh, different, different variants yes 2019 yeah. i mean like yeah yeah there's there's multiple covid covid 17 you know what I like there's there's multiple versions of it or whatever but um yeah yeah no, so I, I don't but like that we've denied anything i think we just no. ask questions about what we're seeing because there are inconsistencies obviously it exists there's no question that it, it exists i'm talking about uh, when i talk about it and the things that come to my mind are the um, the seriousness of it, and not not even the seriousness of how it's affecting people, but the seriousness of the people implementing the rules. Right. Uh, John Stossel, before he even started this uh, this podcast on his Instagram, posted a, a, a COVID hypocrisy, a five minute clip of of people, you know, being hypocritical about about covid rules and stuff like that and we've we've started a segment on this show as well and that's just all around and and that's what i when i'm talking about covid that's the stuff that i i'm focused on sure you know yeah so I, I, it's fascinating because people since so since i love game attack there have been a lot of people who have said like i've shown my true colors of the type of person i am like the idea of questioning things and asking like just making obs conversation about observations like is threatening to people which is mm -hmm. exactly why those things need to happen like disregard the previous 15 years of my career online where you've watched me and you know that i'm a good person but because i said something that you don't necessarily agree with or i didn't say something right at all i'm yeah. now i've now shown shown my true colors yeah which is absolutely you, you can play that game all day back and forth. Oh, with, sure. With I could, you know, like and if you want to pull that game, I can just pick. I don't know you, but and you don't you don't know me. So I could just be like, hey, uh, you know what you haven't said to my face yet? So I'm going to judge you based on what you haven't said to my face, you know, and what you're not willing to publicly say. You know, it's it's a silly game that we are keep doing to ourselves online is it's making everybody miserable. You know, like it goes back to what we just talked about a few minutes ago. Can we just be quality people to each other? Quit pointing fingers and trying to start fires. CDI says people that are that are uh, conflating COVID denial with your desire to be all done with this. Right, right, exactly. Like, I don't think anybody's like, hey, let's have some more lockdowns. All right. Hey, who wants yeah. to stay in their house a little bit longer? All right, mm -hmm, let's go. Mm -hmm, Nobody. Mm -hmm. Like, everybody's yeah. over it. You know, everybody is. Yeah, uh, Iceman says the big thing for me, and probably because I have a young child, is what are the long term effects of it? I don't mm -hmm. want I don't want her to be screwed for the rest of her life because it destroyed her lungs or whatever the symptoms uh, symptoms became. I totally understand that. Totally understand that. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I was thinking about that the other day too about um, the the masks on children and how they've now we're now going into our second year with masks yeah. covering you know their face. And for a lot of really young children, you know, I, I, I honestly think there'll be a, some psychological problems oh, there because, yeah. 
because oh. what what do you do when you talk to little kids? Big expressions, smiles, and you're you're letting them know what happiness is, what sadness, and and if they've already spent a whole year, you know, yeah, uh, doing that. So going into the second year, especially when when one year is a huge chunk of your life at five, six, and seven, and eight, you know, even when you're thirteen, a whole year, whoa. But going into two years, that's your whole life. So, you know, these are these are my observations. No, I I think that's. I've talked about that on a stream. Uh, I don't know. I think I've talked about it with you, but yeah, you know, people talk about the, the, uh, you know, the overall impact of, of COVID, you know, the number of deaths, the number of deaths attached to COVID and it's horrible over 300,000 deaths by the time it's done, you know, there'll be, there'll be over 400, possibly 500,000 deaths in the United mm -hmm. States, right. That, that have been attributed to COVID. Right. Mm -hmm. um, um, but one thing that's not, you know, we have not talked about, enough and you know those who watch my live streams know that i talk about this just the the overall impact from a uh, from depression the overall yeah. impact from drug use the overall yeah. impact on the children that you know like yes i i i'm for sure would would be concerned about my my kids lungs but i i am more than anything you use your brain every day and and the idea of being able to uh put together but I mean, obviously you use your lungs constantly as well. But, but what I'm saying is like, you know, when you, when you cover the thing that, you know, yeah. I, I, I heard a song the other day, it was talking about, you know, and this was a song from the nineties mm -hmm. and it was talking about using, they use a math and the, the, the exact lyrics were something to the effect of, or the lyrics were something to the effect of, they use a mask to cover your expression. Right. Mm -hmm. And, um, and they said, this was, 30 years before COVID, right? Yeah. And they were talking about something else and it was just, it really hit me, right? And, uh, and like, I mean, when, you, when you're a kid, mm -hmm. you know, two, three, four, five, six, seven, elementary school, you mm -hmm. know, middle school, like mm -hmm. I, I saw, you know, you see these kids standing at the bus stop, a single kid doesn't have anybody around him for 50 feet mm -hmm. and, he's got a, and he's got a mask on. Right. Wasn't the original idea behind behind it? Wasn't it like it's either social distancing or the mask? Yeah. Right. When it well, maybe I miss this because it's I feel like the consistency of this, yeah. you know, this goes back to the inconsistency of like the messaging of like, what what are we what are we supposed to hear? What are we supposed to believe? That's the problem is the message has been lost in translation because it's changed so many times. You know, it, it was it did start out that, as that if you can't if you can't social distance, wear a mask. That's what they were saying. But. Then it was like, well, no, you got to wear one all the time. In fact, for a while, it was you got to wear one in your house. And now people wear them in their car when they're, you know, or walking on the beach by themselves or, you know, it's like, what's the limit there? And now it's two. And now it's put put the test in your butt. <laughs> so, like, <laughs> you know, that's where we're at now. And and so I just, you know, I'm just like, OK, you know, that's that's where we're at now where we've reached. Uh, you know, could you imagine if if uh, a test at the airport? to get into, you know, through security was like, well, we got to stick this thing in your butt, you know, just to make sure you're safe. You know, nobody would want to do that. That's very invasive, you know? Right, right. But I don't know. Well, I, apparently some people are. It ensures, uh, look, if we don't, if we don't mm -hmm. stick this thing in your butt, it, it ensures, you know, it, it just ensures more safety on the airplane if we put this in your butt. <laughs> you know what I mean? Right, 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 right. Uh, JT says the next round, the next round of 10 to 15 year olds could be in rough, rough shape socially and emotionally. Yeah. Oh yeah, for sure. I, uh, that's, 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 that's yeah. tough. Yeah. Some, some kids might like it because, you know, when you're 15 years old, you got acne, mm -hmm. you know, you're awkward, your teeth are all weird, you know, like it, it'll, it'll shield you a little bit, but you know, I think that that's part of your character development is to be, you know, when you're awkward, an awkward teenager and you have to go out and face the world, warts and all, zits and all, you know, so to speak, uh, that's where your character really develops. But if you feel like you're hidden, you know, you're not showing your true self. So I don't know. It's crazy. And there there are a lot of stories about depressed teenagers and students that are popping up. Oh, and, yeah. you know, those rates are going to skyrocket probably over over, mm -hmm. you know, covid positive tests and stuff. So, right. So it's 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 a constant conversation, man. And it's yeah. it's it's a tough one for sure. 
you know, just looking at this quick headline here, and I realize that I'm not doing it justice by just reading this very top line here real quick, just to follow up on the mask and social distancing. Uh, I guess this health expert, I don't really know what qualifies as a health expert, but uh, it says, we do know social distancing reduces the risk of transmitting the virus by 90%. Mm-hmm. And wearing masks decrease it by by sixty five percent. So wearing a mask affects everyone. Yeah. If you care about your friends or family, or you care about your community, wear a mask. But- That's a good good stat to know because see, I saw a, a thing that it was a shot on the on a news channel today. It was a screenshot getting passed around. So one mask sixty five percent effective. Two masks on this news uh, channel said seventy five percent effective. But then they said three masks ninety percent effective. So I'm like, okay, so someone's got to walk around with four masks on their face for it to be 100% effective. Is that what you're saying? Why not five masks? <laughs> like, let's or go why, not, why not just get one of those really nice, one of those really nice uh, surgery masks, you know, like, why don't you just get one of those? But here's the thing. If social distancing reduces the, like, and once again, simple observation, just based off this comment, if social mm-hmm. distancing reduces the risk of transmitting the virus by 90%, Right. Mm-hmm. And this reduces it by 65 percent. Right. Mm-hmm. And mass reduced by 65 percent. Obviously, you know, you you know, it's not it's, I'm not doing some Scott Steiner math here and saying that if you if you do both, it's one hundred fifty five percent success rate. But obviously, if you do both, it will better your your rate of uh, of risk of trans of not transmitting the virus. But at the same time, like if you if it's one or the other, I'm going to pick the one that's 90 percent which is right. social distancing. So, you know, yeah. you know, just a basic observation here. So, yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah. what are you going to do? Uh, how, uh, how be, how, how be, uh, Oh, uh, there he goes. I would swab my butt for a Klondike bar. Thanks, what Hal. would you do for a Klondike bar? See, I, uh, I spent coming in and says depression is a real thing during these times. I have a family and, and still depressed with how the state of the world is. Oh, for sure. For sure. Yeah. It's, it's, it's pretty crazy. Absolutely. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Health warrior says, uh, based on that, a kid alone at a bus stop doesn't need it on people, people in their car don't need it on. Look, yeah. I, listen, I don't make the rules. I don't make the rules health warrior. All right. <laughs> you just, and who knows who makes the rules, <laughs> you know, that's the thing. It's, it's crazy. So, um, and health yeah. warrior says, People are getting too used to the mask. I, that's, I think that's my biggest fear, mm-hmm. for sure. Mm-hmm. For sure. I, I think yeah. that's by far. Well, that's what I was talking about over the holidays when you started seeing like blow up Santa Claus decorations and they, they decided to dress up the inanimate object with a mask. You're just it's sort so of like cute. saying at this point, you're just sort of like, it's part of everything. It's, you know, it's like, just can we just pretend like it's not, it, if it doesn't have to be on anything, let's not do that. You know what I mean? Yes. Um, there you go. I, I, I like. There's some simple observations being made in the chat. You know, uh, Invader says notice that the a lot of places are easing up the lockdowns after the election. Food for thought. Uh, Hal throwing out says don't forget to put a mask over your car's air intake. That's right. You don't want your <laughs> don't want your car getting COVID. Love it. Yeah. Love it. Uh, <laughs> There you go. All right, guys. Thank you. Look, uh, we, we've gone pretty long today. Uh, yeah. lot, lots of conversations. Um, and I appreciate everybody popping in. Of course, we encourage you to be a part of the conversation in the comments below. Uh, if you guys are watching over on Twitch, thank you very much. If you're watching over on YouTube, come on over and uh, say hi over at twitch.tv slash Craig's Kids. Invader wants to know if if, um, if I should get a mask for my butt. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a good test. Put a mask on your butt and walk around the house. Toot a little bit. That's right. Hey, we had an awesome time today playing some Mortal Kombat. Make sure you guys come and join me uh, over at twitch.tv slash Craig Skits. Literally right now as this show is finishing up, I'm starting a live stream. That's where I'm I'm trying to get, get everybody to come on over and join. So there's a link in the description. Uh, if, you're, if you made it this far, you might as well come on over and check it out. It's twitch.tv slash Craig Skits. I'll see everybody over there. All right, guys, have a great day. I'll see you guys later. And once again, please subscribe to the channel if you're new. And if you know any uh, 24 to 35-year-old dudes who are looking (laughs) for a fun podcast on a day-to-day basis, make sure you let them know we're here. All right. Yeah. All right, we'll see you guys later. Have a good day. Bye, Brad. Yeah, see you later, Craig. Bye. All right.